Welcome to Rhinogon again. In this video, we will show you how to model this iced pendant using the Rhinogon and Clayu tools. First, we will go to the Elements app. We'll open Clayu and select the Panther model to be loaded in the Rhinogon interface. Once loaded the model, we will go to the SubD tab and activate Clayo. Select the faces marked in red using the faces selection option from toolbar on viewport. Now using the inset tool we will apply a 0.39 in distance. Then we will change the tool and select the extrude defining 0.2 mm in height. We can define the value from panel side and validate the operation. We will continue applying the inset and extrude tool on different areas of the model. We will respect the same values that previous operation. We'll get a similar result to that shown in the video. In this occasion, with basic mode activated to work more comfortably, we will repeat the inset and extrude operations, always respecting the values defined previously. Getting the same result to that shown in the video. Now, from right view, we have traced a curve with Lion's main shape as reference. From Add Face tool of Clayu, we will define a different faces to create a Clayu surface, where later we will generate a Clayu object belonging to Lion's main. We can generate the faces from four points defined with Add Face tool. The faces will be joined between them automatically. Once defined the faces, we will apply the Shell tool to define a thickness on the clayu surface, getting a clayu object. Now we can edit the faces using the face selection from viewport toolbar. We can select one face or various faces at the same time. We use the direction gumball to move the faces. In this step, we will apply an inset operation on the side area of the lion's mane, and then we will apply an extrusion such as we have done before. Now, repeat the inset and extrude operations on the main columns. W 
we will adjust the extrusions height using the gumball so that it doesn't exceed the object height we modify the tapered value to adjust the extrusion wall thickness then we can validate the operation we'll repeat this two operations inset and extrude along the lion's mane respecting the extrusion height and tapered values similar to the previous operation later in this extrude areas is where we will put the puffy composed by the gems in this stage we will hide the lion's mane to work more comfortably and using the paint selection tool we will select the neck faces and delete them removing the cap and then with the add face tool we select the edges and define new faces covering the object using the divide tool we will generate new faces to editing later We will return to the edge selection and will finish to define the faces that will cover the object. In this step, we will load a new Panther model on the Rhino interface from Elements app. In this way, we will get two Panther heads loaded on the interface. We'll scale the second Panther head and reduce it. We'll overlap the two heads and edit the faces of the second head to avoid the protrudes faces. We can scale the faces and move the object. We will also edit the ears. Adjust the distance between the two heads respecting measure of 2 mm. Then we will leave Clayu in this way we will get to meshes and will be able to apply a boolean difference between meshes from 3D printing tab. With this operation we will get a hollow mesh with a thickness of 2 mm. Now we will show the lion's mane and will return to Clayu to edit it. Select the side faces and remove them. Then we'll leave Clayu again and we'll generate a copy of the main using the copy tool. Select the copy in situ from common line. Scale the copy to get a smaller object. We will center the copy respecting the zero axis using the gumball. In this step, we will activate the symmetry from Clayu. Apply it to the lion's mane. To apply the symmetry, we need to define the central axis from common line.
Then activate the faces selection and remove the back faces. Now repeat the operation from the front side, removing the faces using the selection mode. The next step is to unite the two objects using the bridge tool, defining new faces. We will repeat the operation using the bridge tool, defining the faces of the backside, joining the two objects and getting a closed clayu object. Finally, we will leave Cleu going to Rhinogol interface. In this step, we will activate the top view to work more comfortably and select the Buffet Automatic tool. From here, we will position the gems along the surface using the Add option from the side panel. With this option, we can define the gems manually. We must adjust the gem size to the channel measure. We define gems of 1 mm or 2 mm. Now we repeat the same operation on the second channel. Then Ungroup the gems, select the first group and define the prongs using prongs in line tool. In this way, we can define the prongs in parallel. We'll also adjust the end prongs individually. Using the shift key, we can move the prong at the same time. Now, we will repeat the same operation in the second gems group. Then, we will apply an horizontal symmetry from Transform tab. We will apply the symmetry to the gems and repeat the operation for the prongs. In this stage, once defined the gems along the lion head, we can apply the prongs for the gems using the dynamic prong tool from Jewelry tab. With this tool, we can position the prongs on the selected surface. We will keep the same prong size as in the previous step. Now, manually, we will position the prongs using the Add option from the side panel, setting the gems. Once filled the area with the prongs, we can validate the operation.
In this stage, we will return to Clayu and will transform the main mesh to NURBS. Select the main and using the two NURBS tool, we will transform the mesh. Then, we will leave Clayu and go to Rhinoor interface. From here, we will check the NURBS object. It must be a closed poly surface. The next step will be to apply the cutters to the gems to define the stone seats. For this, we will select the gems and go to the jewelry tab activating the Cutter Studio. We make a preview, check the cutter position and validate the operation. Now, lock the lion head and mane to work more comfortably. We will select the gems from the side and well apply a horizontal symmetry duplicating the components on the opposite side. Then, hide the gems and apply a boolean difference. We will go to 3D Prating and select the boolean difference for meshes. Remember that head is a mesh. I recommend apply the boolean difference between cutters and small groups. In this way, the operation will have fewer problems calculating the geometry. Now it's the time to apply a boolean difference between the cutters and lion's mane. In this occasion, we use the boolean operation from modeling tab because we are applying a boolean between NURBS. Remember that previously we transformed the lion's mane mesh to NURBS from Clayu common. If any boolean operation fails, we need to move the objects. In this case, move the cutters. We can use the convol to move the cutter. I define at 0.2 mm to move in the axis and try to apply the boolean again. Finally, we will define a bail for pendants from jewelry tab. We will position the bail with the torus at the top. We will use the gumball to move the bail. I hope you have liked it. Thanks for watching. Bye.